Hey everyone, we are in our one-dimensional kinematics notes and we'll be looking at an example. We'll be doing a vertical kinematics example. This is going to be example number two. All right, so here it is. Uh, we have a ball being thrown upwards and we're told that it reaches a maximum height of 36 meters. We want to know two things about this. First of all, with what velocity was the ball thrown? And second of all, how long does the ball stay in the air? So, as always, what we're going to try to do here is I'm going to have you stop and think about this. We're going to take our words about this situation and put it into a picture. When you've uh, done so, start back up with me. All right, so here we are back at the problem. Um, what we have going on, we, again, know this ball is thrown from the ground level, or some level, I guess, for that matter, and it goes to some maximum height. Now what we have to remember here is you're dealing with snapshots. At the very instant that it gets to the top of the, the path, it stops moving. In other words, the velocity is zero meters per second. So while it doesn't stay at zero meters per second, of course, it starts to fall back down to this level, the ball actually does stop. So when it's at its highest point, it is, um, its velocity is zero meters per second. Um, we're also told that the the height that it reaches is 36 meters, so from our start position to our ending position, so this would be our original or our final, initial, final, whatever you want to call it, is 36 meters. We are also wanting to know with what velocity this is thrown. So we know, of course, this velocity has to be in the upwards direction, and um, it's, you know, from this, this location down here. Now, this is one thing that one thing that gets people a lot is about the acceleration. A lot of people want to say, well, because everything's moving up, we have an upwards acceleration as well. But remember, what is causing the acceleration? That's what we always want to ask ourselves. And of course, I hope you, you would say here, well, if it's moving upwards, it's, it's, it's accelerating because of the effects of gravity. And so gravity is a force that pulls in a downwards direction. So this should come, hopefully is no surprise, but the acceleration is a downwards acceleration, uh, and it's it's always the same value, assuming of course there's no air resistance, which which we do, and so our acceleration um, is gravity, and that's a value we know of 9.8 meters per second squared. And another thing I want to note here, and this may or may not come into play, but I'm just gonna throw it out there that the ball has some velocity when it gets back to this level as well. So that may come up a little bit later. We'll, we'll deal with that when needed. So at any rate, we have our knowns here. And again, um, one thing we want to keep in mind here is that we have some positive direction. I typically like to call my acceleration the direction that's positive. Again, you can call any direction positive. It really doesn't matter. But the, the important thing is that you keep track of it when you're dealing with with your, your knowns and especially when you put it into your um, equations. So my acceleration is a positive because it's in the downwards direction right here. Um, our final velocity of course is zero. Uh, again, just a little note that when the ball gets to the top, it does stop. And that is, that's an important thing to keep in mind. You're never gonna be told that. You just need to know that, that when it gets to the top, the, the velocity is zero. And our displacement, um, delta y, again, this is in an upwards direction. So therefore, um, it's going to be a negative displacement, and it's 36 meters. So our goal here is to find this initial velocity, the velocity right here, and our goal is also to find how long this ball is in the air. In other words, from this point all the way back down to where it reaches the same point. So what I'd like you to do here is think about how you're going to take this problem we now have words to describe it, we've got pictures to describe it. I'd like you to figure out a way to describe this with equations. When you think you've figured that out, go ahead and pick up with me again. All right, so the first part uh, we're dealing with here, um, we wanted to find the original velocity or the initial velocity. We know that the final velocity is zero. We have an acceleration and we have a displacement. So again, this is kind of important here, making sure we keep track of our negatives and positives. Uh, again, I like to do it on the variables 
but certainly you can you know put these negatives and positives in the equation whenever you put the numbers in it really doesn't matter when you do that just do it at one place or the other so ultimately I'm going to solve for my original velocity um, I'm going to need to get the original velocity by itself so it looks like I pulled everything else to the other side and then to get the V sub O by itself uh, I needed to take the square root of both sides so it looks like I end up with um, the square root of 2 times a delta y for this first part to find the original velocity. Now my second one, what I'm going to do here is again my final velocity, the time at the top is 0 and substitute in ending up solving for t being equivalent to v sub o over the acceleration of gravity. Now before I say anything more here, I want you to think about this time. Is this time the time that we're actually looking for? I want you to stop and think about this for just a moment and pick up with me once you've thought about it. Alright, so the question was, was this time that we're solving for right here actually the time it takes to get to the um, top? And I, I hope that you kind of realize that it's not. In fact, the time it takes to go from the, the bottom, in fact, let me bring that picture back up here. Time it takes to go from this point here to this point here is of course not the entire time because the ball has this, this time to fall back down to this location. So whenever we're talking about this, this really is only half the time. Well, this is a really simple fix. Uh, since it's half the time, you just simply multiply the answer you get here by 2 and you end up with the, uh, the final answer that we're looking for. Um, and again, let's go to the where I actually put the numbers in here and you'll see that I've actually done that. So making substitutions, I end up with 26.6 uh, .6 meters per second um, for my original, the magnitude of the original velocity. Again, in my response section, because it was negative, again, if we go back to our picture, we'll see that's the case. There's my original velocity, downwards is positive, so therefore my original velocity is a negative value. If I want velocity as a vector, I need to have that negative in front. Down here, solving for time, again, putting the original velocity and the acceleration in, I get 2.71 seconds, but remember that this is only half the time uh, from the bottom of our picture up to the top. So I need to multiply this by 2. gives me the total time right here. Now, what I'd like you to do here is <clears throat> stop and think about this. I'd like you to think about a different way to do this and see if there is another way to actually solve this problem. And... Um, the fact that I'm asking this question would indicate to you that there is. Once you think about this for a moment, I'd like you to um, come back to me and see what you see what you came up with. All right. So the question we left with was, could we solve this in a different manner? And what I'd like to say about this is, we're going to you know reference our equations that we have, and let's take a look at how this might be done. So the way we did solve it was we we knew that the time from the bottom to the top was half the total time. So we just simply, you know, figured out that the time was 2.71 seconds to the top and then multiply it by 2. Well, another way to think about this, and I'm just going to move this out of the way. Let's move this over here. Oh, that should go along too. Um, we know about this velocity here when it... Hold on. Let me try copying that again. There we go. We know what happens here as it comes back down, the velocity basically just gets flipped over. In other words, the, the um, velocity, it's, it, it gains the velocity back that it lost going up. So in other words, the if it leaves the ground with, and I can't remember the number, but it's 26 or something like that, it leaves with 26 um, meters per second in an upwards direction, it's going to end with a 26 meters per second downwards. So that actually, what that would do is would give us a, I guess a, if we look at this snapshot here and this snapshot here, would give us a final and then original velocity at the start and a final velocity at the end. So using the same equation we did, we actually do know both the final velocity and original velocity. And so we'd have the same number um, but opposite direction. There's the important thing to substitute in here. So using two different snapshots, 
instead of using the, the very bottom and the top, would allow us to actually solve this in a different manner. <clears throat> Another way to think about this is, and this is the reason I moved our delta y out of the way here, let me think about the delta y between these two snapshots. And as you think about this delta y between these two snapshots, um, this should kind of be reminiscent of some, some things we looked at before. If it starts at this position and it ends at this position, our delta y is actually zero meters. And so this, actually, if we think about what this is, we, we would have a delta y, we have an original velocity, we have an acceleration, this would actually allow us to solve using this equation here. So what that would do, of course, is we're dealing with a t and a t squared. You'd actually have to use a couple different ways here. There's a, uh, you'd have to do um, a factoring kind of thing, or you could use quadratic formula. So there's kind of a different way you could approach this as well. Um, this guy right here, I wouldn't use this. Again, notice there's no t in this, um, so I would that wouldn't even be an option here. Um, and our last one here, uh, we have a final velocity and original velocity. But hopefully you're seeing from this one what would happen. Uh, this doesn't work as well, and the reason it doesn't work is because uh, what you'd end up with here is a zero on this side, of course, for delta y. And here you'd be putting in two things that are opposite of one another, and they're going to cancel out, giving us a zero here. And that, of course, will end up having nothing to solve for for t, um, because that'll be canceled out as well. So this actually doesn't work just because mathematically the, the way the equation works. And this ultimately comes from um, the average velocity. And since our average velocity is based on our displacement, and that's zero, uh, this does not allow us to actually solve for the time. All right, so heading back to our problem, we have also another way to think about this. And I want you to go ahead. We've done the words, the pictures, the equations. I want you to now think about how to graph this problem. When you have done so, I'd like you to come back to me and see what you come up with. <clears throat> so here's our three different kind of graphs we could talk about. We've got our distance versus time, velocity versus time, and an acceleration versus time. I'm actually going to start this one off with um, an acceleration versus time. And I'll tell you why here. Um, we know that we have an acceleration. Here's our acceleration arrow. It's in a downwards direction, which is positive. And we also know that it's constant the entire time. So I think this is going to be the easiest one. A constant acceleration in a positive direction simply looks like this. Notice again, it's in the positive region of the graph. And it's constant. At all values of time, the acceleration is constant. Uh, next, I'm going to go to my velocity versus time. So I'm kind of working backwards here what's from what some people might think about. Um, now, velocity, notice our original velocity here starts at a certain value, and that's a negative value. So down here, I know that it's going to have to start down in the negative portion of the graph. Of course, this is negative and the positive. And we also know that at some point it becomes zero. So at some time later, and these are not drawn to scale just so you know, Sometime later, it becomes zero. And then, at the end, it has some positive velocity uh, in the downwards direction, which, of course, is the positive direction. So sometime later, it's going to be like this. Now, the question is, how do I connect these together? Well, since acceleration is constant, and remember, acceleration on this kind of graph is equal to the slope, and it's constant. There's only one choice that we have, and that is to connect these three points. Whoops, they're connected. We'll pretend they're connected. And I can move this a little bit. There we go. We're going to pretend those are connected, but this is a constant slope. In other words, constant acceleration, showing us that um, what our velocity versus time graph looks like. All right, and lastly, our distance versus time graph actually is going to look like this. Um, since the velocity is changing, we think about slope here. The slope is constantly changing on this graph. It's also a negative slope to begin with, indicating a negative velocity. So there's what our three graphs would look like.